Welcome back to the City of Canada podcast. I'm your host, Bartholomew Crenshaw. With me, as always, is Jack Newsman. And Jack, Gavin McInnes is talking about the United States of America, of course. But we've got a whole bunch of numbers saying that Canada has turned. The left is dead. People don't like woke anymore. It's great news going in to 2024. This is our two-year anniversary episode. Can you believe we made it this far, Jack? Here we are. We've made it. Things are looking great. I agree with Gavin. I think, you know, maybe Canada's a little further behind the States. It is hard to gauge, but that's my feeling too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've been tracking it for the whole two years. If we go back and we think about when we first started this show, a lot of people that have been with us the whole time, this is, you know, some of our listeners have been with us right from the very beginning or from the Freedom Convoy. We still got a bunch of people listening to us that are now working with the Alberta Conservative Party and doing great work over there. So I hope they get good information out of us. But sometimes like when we're doing episodes, when we're going over some of the news and stuff, the numbers, it's easy for people to think, oh, well, you know, yeah, that's pretty obvious now. But like we're really tracking how we've come from a point where we thought our destruction was imminent two years ago. And we were in such a bad position and virtually everybody thought that the left was going to win. And now, I mean, we, we've we watched the systematic dismantling of them and destruction of their brand, like Kevin McInnes was saying, and like we've been saying for a year and a half probably about Trudeau. Well, actually, since the day of the great horse trampling incident, basically Trudeau has destroyed the brand of the Liberal Party. And now... I mean, they're just absolutely crushed, right, Jack? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we started this podcast just because of how bad things were, right? It was like, this is our last hoorah. Like, we're going to at least try and bring some, you know, what we saw was the truth to, to people just to counteract what we were seeing, right? As just, you know, we, we were we were definitely on the defensive. But, no, we're, we're miles past there. Things are, things are looking good, like I said. And I don't know. I think these guys are collapsing. People see them. we got a hell of a show lined up here for you. To just just show further that these guys are falling apart their plans aren't working people hate them you know people want political change and people really see where the problems are yeah and things have gotten so bad for them that now like they really have to wage their war right out in the open and yeah. and they're doing that we're seeing that that's why i mean a lot of the things that go on are very stress inducing <laughs> the stuff around donald trump getting knocked off some ballots but we've got a bunch of great news about that uh, not really working and um, it's also like uh, they're put into positions now where they ca- they can't count on elections. They can't count. They know that their media doesn't really uh, sway people anymore, and nobody's listening to them. Only CBC is basically financially propped up anymore in Canada, while the other like uh, CTV, City, all those people are losing money hand over fist. The propaganda is not working. Is the biggest part. Like even the people in their day to day lives that you would think, oh, well, they don't pay attention to anything, so they're just going to keep voting liberal or liking Trudeau or this or that. Even that's not happening anymore. So we got a True North News article by Quinn Patrick here. 69% of Canadians think Trudeau should resign before next federal election, says the poll. So 69%, well, that's already a good number, Jack. But keep in mind what they're saying. They're saying that he shouldn't even finish his term, right? Right. So that's a huge number. I mean, only 31% think he should even finish the term in Canada. Like, this is huge. The article goes on, nearly 7 in 10 Canadians believe Prime Minister Justin Trudeau should resign in 2024 before the next scheduled federal election in 2025, according to a new survey by Ipsos. That belief is strongest held in Alberta, where 81% of respondents said Trudeau should step down as Prime Minister, I mean, I've never seen numbers so big. In Saskatchewan and Manitoba, that number was 73%. In Ontario, 70%. And in BC, surprising, 66%. And that only surprises me because of Vancouver. Like, actually, a lot of BC is quite conservative, except for the Vancouver area, sadly. (laughs) So it says Trudeau appeared to retain the most support in Quebec and Atlantic Canada. However, even those regions... 63% 63% and 62% of respondents said they would like Trudeau to resign in 2024. So again, it's like, don't bother finishing your job. Like, don't bother finishing your term. Leave yeah. now, like immediately. 
That's what they're saying. The, and this is the, not even an election. This is like, get out. Yeah. yeah so this is bad for th- him. That's that's why the numbers are so freaking insane. If you were saying 63% said that they wouldn't vote liberal in the next election, that's a t- whole different story. <laughs> but people hate Trudeau. This is a Canada-wide phenomenon. And, like, it, it's worse in Quebec even than Atlantic Canada, which is a bit of a shock because he always panders to Quebec. So despite the fact that an overwhelming majority of Canadians would like to see Trudeau step down, only 28% of respondents believe that he actually will. Well, I think a lot of that is, I mean, people are educated on this guy. People people know he's working for Klaus Schwab. A lot of people, anyways, like a, a big part of this number. I'm not saying everybody, but a big part of this number knows that he's, he's basically not allowed to step down. He's working for somebody else. Yeah. Like, it's not just his decision to make. Like, he, he is holding the reins of power for Klaus Schwab. So Canadians in Alberta, 71%, and Atlantic Canada, 76%, were the most convinced that Trudeau wouldn't step down. Again, like the, that Alberta population is the most educated on the World Economic Forum and how they work, right, in the United Nations and how they're yeah. pulling the strings around here. So it looks like, I mean, Alberta is really well educated. <laughs> you, can t- you can tell this. Like they are following the real politics of the situation. So no surprise that they're making the most headway uh, fighting Trudeau, that Danielle Smith has retained a huge amount of popularity over there. And she, she does a good job of standing up for Albertans without seeming like a radical. Mm-hmm. 